I'm sure the break format for this year's event. What we've seen at the European Open, we will discuss this as the matches go on in the days. See if the players have figured something out since that last major when this new break was implemented. But going off the first break, Michael, nothing much has changed for Coping Chung. It's a dry one. And under the old breaking rules, if you had a situation like this where you had a big name against an outsider, the big name won the lag, you might not see the other guy at the table till about the fifth or sixth rack. There's different times now, so Blackiston getting to the table straight away. That was really the ideal first shot to have because you'd expect to get it, but it was just missable enough that knocking it in gives him a little bit of a boost. Not someone we know a huge amount about. We do know that he's from Rock Hall in Maryland. He was born in 1984. Nothing wrong with the first couple of shots, but the body language, Carl, suggests he's a little bit nervous, but that's just inevitable, really, for a player in his situation, and I think it's backed up by what we've seen with that three ball. Yeah, it's so important for the unknown player or the player that's not got much experience in these events and certainly the, the feature table to get off to a good start. And we see it so often where they make a mistake and then the top pro, in this case Ko Ping Chun, will go on to punish and open up a healthy lead and then it can soon get away from you in a game of pool. Them little chances, they can define matches and wins. Well, if you've got to have any chance of pulling off a big upset, which obviously it would be for Blackiston to win this match, you've got to set the right tone early on. And instead, all he's done there is show his nerves to his much more experienced opponent, which in turn takes the pressure off him. Elliot Sanderson has closed it out at 9 4 now against Scott Haas. Jonas Suto Camino, young Spanish player who's been enhancing his reputation this year. A 9-2 win against Joe Spence. Billy Thorpe is now through. I told you he was closing in on victory against Jason Robichaux of Canada. That's now over at 9-3. Big week for Billy Thorpe. Just come back from serving a ban. He knows the Moscone Cup. He's close. And he'll want to be there competing. He's shown good form in Moscone's past. And sure our friend and colleague Jeremy Jones would love to have an informed Billy Thorpe in his team. Starts next month, last day of November it all begins. And we'll be talking a lot this week about the formation of the teams. This is a huge week in that context. And Ko Ping Chung pouncing on Blackiston's error in missing that three ball. He didn't get back to the table. Ko has closed it out and leads 1-0. Tell us about Ko Ping Chung then, Carl. Someone we're very familiar with and great to see him back on this international stage. Yeah, one of the best. You know, if you was to form a top, a top 20, you would like to think his name will be floating around that. He's the younger brother to Ko Ping Yi. There's also Ko Ping Han. He's playing this year as well, so sure Michael will keep the viewers updated on the three brothers. Yeah, and speaking of staying updated, uh, giving you some of the matches that have just finished. You can see your various scores going through there and your own favourites. Dang Tan Kien of Vietnam, now on the hill at 8-3 against Samuel Henderson. And just some matches starting out now. Dennis Grabber or Grabe, I know that debate is still going on as to how exactly it's pronounced. Carl rolling his eyes at me there. He's just starting out against Farhan Mumtaz of Canada. Baram Lotfi of Denmark starting against Randolph Labont of the United States. Back here, Ko Ping Chung leads Robert Blackston 1 0. Yeah, he made the wing ball. Now, we, we, we have spoke about this. The wing ball is not wired, it's not going to go straight in. Just watch the red three ball here. 
but if you load the cue ball up with loads of spin, sometimes that can squeeze in the corner. And that's fair enough, but the main thing is now with the new brake format is you can't control the cue ball, it's hard to control the one ball. And we're seeing that here. You know, we've got the cue ball and the one ball, the lowest ball on the table. At either side, so he's going to play a safety or a bank. We seem to spend the entire week at Fulda in Germany during the European Open, Carl, talking about the new break rules. Now, some people may not have seen that event, so explain to us, if you would, what exactly has changed in terms of the rules and how the balls are set. I'm going to explain it, Michael, but I'm going to explain it on the next break. Good thinking. If that's OK with your good self. Just because they'll put the cue ball in that box, you can see up at the top, and then we'll talk about what the player is trying to achieve. Turned 27 last month, Ko Ping Chung. He's just been feeling his way back onto the world stage this year. All those travel issues that so many people from that part of the world have had in recent times. Teamed up with his brother for a very good showing at the World Cup. Beat Argentina, Greece and the Netherlands before losing to the eventual winner Spain in the semi-finals. Not quite sure what Ko Ping Chung was attempting there. Sometimes, though, well, he wasn't playing the cross bank, was he? Maybe he was trying to roll the cue ball in behind the purple five. Oh, the scratch has come. I was just about to say, Michael, people often think you should just play the table. You're at the table, you're in control of your own destiny. So just play the table, but I disagree with that. I think pool's a game where you play the player. Coping Chung will have recognised his opponent. He's struggling. He looks a little bit edgy. Yeah, I mean, obviously the scratch is perhaps the most significant thing there, giving Coping Chung ball in hand. But in another sense, the real telltale sign there was the fact he was so far away from making the pot. It's so easy for your brain to get scrambled when you're in that sort of position, out there under the lights. You make a few mistakes early on. The way to try to look at it is to not feel any pressure, which I know is easier said than done, to try and remind yourself nobody's expecting anything of you. They're coming in as much the outsider as Blackiston is here. As I say, that might make sense, but actually acting in that way, getting that into your heart and your head, and that's the challenge. And it's one he's struggling with at the moment, and in the next few moments he could be 2 0 down. Under the cue ball a little bit there. He may have to play a bit of a fancy shot now, unless he can just stop the cue ball there and just kill it. Yeah, he can, so that was okay. And what you'll see now is you'll probably see Ko Ping Chun just speed up a little bit. He feels like this is a nice warm-up match. Well, he's feeding off his opponent's errors at the moment. The miss on the three proved decisive in the opening rack and the scratch. And a badly missed pot, really. Ended up costing Blackiston the second rack as well. Well, that's 2 0 to Coping Chung. All proceeding pretty much as we would have expected. We were talking about Moscone Cup coming up now. Well, Shane Wolford is in that conversation. Possibly in the mix for a spot on the American team for the first time. He's taken the opening rack against Guido Juiced. Who's he playing? Guido Juiced. Where's he from? He's from the United States. Wow, what a fancy name yeah, he's got. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Wonderful names, actually, in this field. And there you can pick out any of the matches you're looking for. Robbie Capito from Hong Kong. Someone we've been talking about quite a bit. Hasn't really delivered in these events yet. 2-0 up against Cheng Yong Lin. And 
as you can see there, it's going to be a day of comfortable wins. There'll be one or two little surprises along the way. So the break off, the cue ball has got to be in that box. Nine balls going close to the corner. Don't think he's got enough speed on it though, but I think he's made the wing ball again there though. So something's going on with that. Looks like extreme spin, doesn't it? Yeah, the wing ball is going. Which is fair enough because, you know, it's not like we want the players to have a complete nightmare on the break, but it's more about the layout. And you can see straight away, it's not, I'm not saying it's the most difficult layout, but he's got to play a good shot here. It's all about speed control. And he's judged that very nice indeed. So his last two breaks, he has managed to squeeze the wing ball in. So we were talking about the changes, and now you've got to break from that break box. But also the way the balls are set up has changed as well, hasn't it? Yeah, the nine ball is now on the spot. In previous tournaments, the one ball was on the spot. So now the rack has been moved up a little higher. That is supposed to take away a guaranteed wing ball. When the one ball is on the spot, the wing ball will just fly in. Even my co-commentator could have potted the wing ball back in the day. But now things are a little trickier. And you can just see with Ko Ping Chung, he's got to put loads of spin on the cue ball. And it's going to be interesting to, to watch the different players over the next few days. Especially Shane Van Bonen in these regards. Arguably the best breaker in pool. Is this going to be another week of you disparaging my abilities with cue and hand, Carl? I still keep reminding you, you've never seen me play. 100%. OK. Who's the better player between you and Mr. Phil Yates? I think if we played now, I might win. You're looking for a table already, aren't you? Yeah, you can see the speed of... Open Jim now, he knows this match is... It's going to be a nice little warm-up match. Yeah, well, now he's had his first break and run. And this Blackiston can console himself with the reality that there was nothing he could have done about that one. So it hasn't taken very long at all for Ko Ping Chung to lead by three racks to nil. I think back in the day, Phil actually was a very accomplished player. I know he played snooker to a very high standard. So maybe we'll have that match towards the end of the week with Carl putting up the money for it. Well, that's a match I'd like to commentate on. <laughs> Not sure anyone would want to watch. Pius Labutas from Lithuania has taken the opener against Jaidev Zaveri of India. Dmitry Jungo of uh, Switzerland winning the opener against Kuo Haswan Wai. Some of the big names coming up later. Joshua Filler against Jeffrey Kennedy of Canada. We've got Fedor Gorst on this table next. And he may not have to wait too long because this one is going all the way. Ko Ping Chung at the moment. his first big final at a big event in Japan 12 years ago now when was beaten by the former world champion Thorsten Homan. He was world junior champion just a few years later 2013 beat Sebastian Bakovsky for the Polish contingent in the final. And won the US Open 8 ball the following year with a win over Shane Van Boning. He's been world 10 ball champion back in 2019. And there's a decent record in the world nine ball semi-finalist in 2015 heavily beaten by Shane Van Boning who then went on to lose to Copen Yee in the final and he was a semi-finalist at the world championship in 
2019, beaten by Fedor Gorst, who, as we say, are going to be seen in the very near future on this table. So far, Michael, things are just panning out as we would expect. But over on table 19, Jason Theron from South Africa, very accomplished player, not a major winner, but someone who's beat good players. You know, he's took scalps. He's losing seven racks to five to an American, Payne McBride. Payne McBride is playing in this year's SVB Junior Open. Yeah, and that's an event we'll be talking about this week as well. Yeah, that's 17 and under. So Payne's showing maybe some capabilities of future stardom and coping. John, uh, that is just purely lack of concentration. He feels like he's going to win this match easy, but you're still going to focus. Things can start to turn a little nasty out there. We were talking about Payne McBride. I think Coping Chung's going to be feeling the pain after that. That was a great chance to make it two breaking runs in a row. is isn't something you see anything like as often as you used to before the break rules were changed. Now, real chance for Blackiston here. Oh, dear. These are really, really concerning signs, Carl. That was an absolute golden chance to get his first rack on the board. And all he's done there is reinforce in Coe's head just how straightforward this contest should be yeah, he's having a go the bank in the left side yeah nice shot that was the cue ball it's a little slower pace and this could be often a little tester but this shot is a lot easier when you're 3-0 up but these type of shots later on in the week if you're still in these become missable So yet again, it's a story of Cove feeding off Blackiston's errors. In that case, it was a really bad miss on the seven when he'd been gifted the opportunity to open his account in this match. Instead, the lead is now stretched to 4-0. News of that match on table two we were telling you about. Christina to catch now leading Henrik Larsson 7-5. We're going to have a quick look at that one. and at the table with a chance to get back to just one behind again. Obviously this is an implement that he's pretty accomplished with because something he finds himself using on a very frequent basis. Jovan Bustamante, another player with a great name of the United States, on the hill at 8-4 against Mustafa Alnar of Turkey. Jamal Adam Usi of the United States, leading South African Kyle Akalu, 8-4, so that's another player on the hill. And Cheng Lung Lin has come from 2-0 down to level at 2 all with Robbie Capito. So much going on here in this opening day. At the moment, it's all going the way of Ko Ping Chung on table one. Rinaldo Dendari Arena of Puerto Rico, also on the hill at 8-5 against Max Eberle. So should see a few more winners coming through in the next few minutes. Coping Chung has made the wing ball again. That is something we just didn't see at the European Open. Now what we have to bear in mind is the balls are brand new. This is only the second match on this table. The cloth's brand new. So that wing ball He's clearly squeezing in. The longer this event goes on, that's going to become more difficult. But the beauty of this break is the fact that you can't really control the cue ball. And that's why he was faced with playing a push. Robert's put him back in, which means Coping Chun had to play the shot if you're unsure of what's just gone on. You can always play a push out after the break. But when you play the push out, you must take note your opponent can put you back in so that's paid off for Robert be nice to see him win a rack he's lost the cue ball a little bit but it's good pot can he get a rack on the board 
players were asked to fill in an information sheet about themselves before the event started and one of the questions they were asked was to give a fascinating fact about themselves and a lot of players mentioned a special skill they have well, Robert said he can ride his bike without any handlebars sounds like quite a challenge at the moment you probably find that easier than trying to string a few pots together because it has been a real struggle for him had a great chance in the previous rack he's got another one here is it that, is it that called a unicycle you would know Carl I mean you were around in the days when they were prevalent it's harsh on day one well you are going to be 40 soon so you know I can I can say these things about you now Thank you. The young man, Tane McBride, is on the hill. He leads Theron 8 5. Theron's a capable player. I'm going to keep an eye on the, the young American to see how he gets on. Ah, oh, that's good work. Good effort there. He hasn't had the look positionally, but even that pot. Ordinarily, you wouldn't say it was a tester, but with what's gone before and the mistakes he's made, on this occasion, it will give him a little bit of a boost. And just talking about young McBride, Carl, it's been such a theme for the last number of years. We've been saying just so little coming through on the American scene, but they have been saying, the Americans, the last couple of years, watch out because there are some young players with potential. So good signs there from McBride. Yeah, and these tournaments in America and the fact that we've got the SVB Junior Open, that is only going to enhance these young players and turn them into world beaters. Unfortunately, I don't think Robert Blackston, Blackston is going to be a world beater in this match. The safety shot has gone wrong. Coping Chung can see the potting angle. On the other table, though, to catch seven, Henrik Larsson six, that has been a battle. Yep, could hardly be more in contrast to what we're seeing here on table one so far on this opening day. Carlo Biado cruising through, coping Chung yet again, picking up on the errors of his inexperienced opponent. And now he leads 5-0, already more than halfway to victory. Jovan Bustamante through, 9-4 winner now against Mustafa Alnar. Billy Thorpe, not sure would confirm that one. I think he told you we were on the, he, sorry, that he was on the hill. And he's now into the next round, beating Jason Robichaux of Canada 9-3. Dennis Grabber cruising along, 4-0 up against Farhan Mumtaz, who's representing Canada. And Torsten Holman, twice world champion, just starting out against the British player Simon Ayres, out on table 10. Shane Wolford now leading 3-1. He's won two racks in a row there against Guido Joost. Long established British player Imran Majid level at 1 0 with Yipkin Ling Leo. 5 0 here on table one. Again, the wing ball is pocketed. Talked about how well he did with his brother in the World Cup. His brother, of course, was part of the winning team in the World Cup back in 2011. And they met in the World Masters. I was looking at Coe's record in individual events this year. It was a real struggle, horrible match, really. It was Coe Pinyi who came through that first round clash and went on to the semi finals. And it was an early exit also for Coe Ping Chung at the World Championship. Got to the last 64 which was the single elimination stage, but was then beaten by Ronald Regley of the Switzerland team who got to the quarterfinals of the World Cup this year.
How's his pace? He would have liked it to run on a little bit more, but he's still got a point into the top left. This is pretty much rack ball. You pop this all the other balls are over the pocket. questionnaire that the players filled out. Robert Blackiston, honest, said that his nickname back home is the Comeback Kid. Well, that's certainly what he's going to need to be here because Ko Ping Chung has sailed through another rack. All his own doing this time. And that is 6-0. Blackiston just looks so nervous and a little bow to his opponent there. Not something you see very often and looks to be in a hurry almost to get this over with at this stage getting the balls out of the pockets just looks very fidgety really bad signs but no disgrace in any of that he's not used to this sort of environment he knows he's up against a very big name player and a lot of these lesser known players when they enter these events some of them are really praying that they'll draw a big name and get in one of the main tables but others when it happens are almost in fear of it before a ball is struck Shane Wolford has stretched his lead to 4-1 in the All-American Clash with Guido Juiced. <laughs> Capito now 3-2 up against Cheng Lung Lin. Badr Alawadi in a real battle with Jakub Savitsky of Poland. Six all in that. Keep it on the purple five ball. Yeah, he's squeezing that in. You can see the cue ball. Look at the cue ball still spinning. So he's having to really juice the cue ball up with spin. And that spin, he's transferring on the pack and squeezing that purple down into the pocket. He's never sure where the cue ball is going to finish. He can't control the cue ball anymore. But it's... Not good news for Robert because he's got a shot on this two ball, the blue two. Yeah, could be third breaking run of the match. And that's a decent tally to produce these days with these new breaking rules. Let's just have a quick look at uh, table two. As we're saying completely different story. So much closer in this one, but it looks as though Christina to catch. Is heading for the hill here. Two balls away she is from leading Henrik Larsson. 8-6. Based in the United States for uh, quite some time in recent years. Certainly living in Washington for a while, Christina to catch. She's heading for the hill in the next few moments. Coping Chung. Shouldn't be far away from doing the same. It's his third break and run of the match. And with that, he now leads 7-0 against Robert Blackiston. It's another All-American clash to tell you about. Michael Yednuck now on the hill at 8-5 against Hunter Sullivan. And another Hunter, Lombardo, 4-0 up against Salvatore Mancuso. That's also a clash which brings together two players from the host nation. And a reminder, we will be seeing Fedor Gorst on this table up next. Someone who's been having a good year, but away from the arena of the big matchroom events. So it'll be great to see him against Cone Bell of the United States. Probably in about 15 minutes from now, you would think, the way this one's heading. Blackiston would just love to get a rack on the board. But he can't get a look in at the moment. Ko Ping Chung stepping up his dominance as the contest goes on. Oh, there's that wing ball again, but a scratch this time. Yeah, that is pretty much the break in a nutshell. You just can't really control the cue ball. 
Obviously, he's trying to pop the wing ball, which he's done very successfully so far in this match. Well, we were saying the issue for Blackiston at the moment as he tries to avert the whitewash is just that he can't get to the table to get a look in. Well, here's his chance now, but look at the, the balls. They seem to be sitting nicely, but the way this contest has gone for him, getting as far as potting that nine ball must seem like a really long journey at the moment. It's a good chance this though for your first rack. All the balls are nicely. You feel the four to the five is where it's going to go wrong for Robert. And that would mean if he doesn't quite get on the five how he wishes. Pay McBride, the young American, is on the hill. It's 8-6 over Jason Theron. Can he get that win? That would be a big win, you feel. It's hard to pick out the matches so far. Where's the cue ball going to finish? It's going to be a little bit shy of pace, so when he pots this five, he may just have to play a little bump shot into the eight, or can he draw past it and back over? Yeah, I mean, this is the problem, isn't it? He had some fairly routine shots coming up to that, but when you've got a bit more to do there and you're under all sorts of mental strain, something like that, it's so much more of a test. You're playing with a lot of pace. And really nothing went right with that shot. Here comes the cue ball and this very simple nine ball for a dream start. It's almost like a bit of a practice match for coping, Chum. Yeah, Blackiston just keeps setting him up with chances here. It's one of those situations where you feel if Blackiston could just get out of the arena for 10 or 15 minutes and calm himself down, come back, recompose, he might have something more to offer, but he's really stuck in a mental rut right now. And Coping Chung is on the hill and closing in on a very swift victory. Shane Wolford, 5-1 up now against Guido Juiced. Wolford, young man worth keeping an eye on. As we've said, he's been talked about in Moscone Cup terms. The Americans really looking for some new talent to come through after winning only two of the last 12 contests. Close one between Demetrius Yelitus and Matt Kra, All-American clash. That one's 6-all at the moment. Robbie Capito after a close start against Cheng Lung Lin, is starting to pull away and leads 5-2. And Christina to catch when we saw her just about to go to the hill. She's still there at 8-6 over Henrik Larsson. Not sure we confirmed Elliot Sanderson's win, British player, but he is through 9-4 against Scott Haas. Ko Ping Chung, 8-0 up. Well, he's been breaking well. I know it might not look well in the sense of the cue ball's been in all directions of the pool table, but just the sheer fact that it keeps potting that wing ball. and He's actually moving the cue ball a little inside of the box, the break box. A lot of the plays at the European was breaking from the extreme corner of that box. But this is the beauty of it now. You're always going to be faced with something tricky, and this is where the big players will shine because you feel he's got to play this into the top left corner. There's no value pointing in the side. So he's going long, and it's in the middle of the pocket. You always felt it was going to be Michael at 8-0. Yeah, there's just no pressure at all at the moment. It's not like there are any big consequences even if he misses it. In all fairness, you would have to say it would be unlikely to even cost him the rack. So this should be the end of this one. Obviously, there'll be much bigger challenges ahead for Ko Ping Chung if he's to go a long way in this US Open, but it's just the ideal start. He's had a run out. 
on table one here. Well, Robert Blackiston isn't even going to see it out in the end. And he's decided to shake hands before the winning nine ball needs to go down.